and 20% Latino, 10% Asian, and another 8 to 10% other. Um, we have about 25 languages spoken at the school. We have kids from every sort of socio socioeconomic demographic that you can imagine. We have really rich The Hill kids. We have a small population of homeless kids. I would say at least 50% of the kids here live in apartments. So they may be familiar with gardens. They may see beautiful yards, but they don't have gardens and they don't have a place where they could have a garden. So we're really careful not to talk about backyard gardening. We talk a little more about you can have a garden in a pot in your on your front porch or yeah, in your walkway just or they could just could pick up speed without really realizing it. built the first structure we built in this garden was not the greenhouse um, it was this tool shed because we knew that we needed a place to to keep our things and a way to create a structure in order for the students so you'll see that we have a little coding system the the tools with the red tape around them go in that particular holder the boots are paired up with their numbers brightly painted on them and any tool that has a yellow piece of tape on it goes in the tool shed in a very particular place and gloves get pinned to the to the wall uh, wall uh, hang. So uh, then came uh, then came the uh, several years later the greenhouse and we had a fundraising on St. Patrick's Day and we called it something like the sharing of the green. And um, we raised $15,000, and that is a kit from a company in Oregon called Sturdy Built. And we had um, volunteers from the community come and help us put it together. It took uh, five times longer than we thought it was going to take. We had to end up having an architect come and finish it because it really was quite complicated. But um, we really recommend that as a, as a way to go. And... Um, that greenhouse is now full. Um, you can. You can see. The tool shed was um, built by. There was a woman who was um, the garden. I mean, the program coordinator, and she and her husband had a little company which they still have called Wow House, and they designed it. And it was put up by a lot of people in the community. We had like kind of a barn raising day. Yes, fantastic. But it was basically designed and built by a guy whose name is Scott Constable, with a lot of help from so his friends. So you just happened to be lucky to have him as a... Uh, we did, but you could have him too. They have a website called Wow House, W-O-W-H-A-U-S, and they're amazing, really amazing. So plants on them, we're getting ready for our plant sale. We think we've got just about everything propagated at this point by the students. So take a peek in the greenhouse on your way to the kitchen because it's quite fascinating what we have going on in there what the kids are doing and let's see what else how much do you make from the sale you know we have a goal this year 30,000 is that right Winslow yeah. our goal but we we do a plant sale but we it's also we have music we have a raffle we have food um, a lot of people who have food businesses in the community set up their little mm -hmm. stands and we take a small percentage from them so we've built it from more than a plant sale uh, to kind of a, a happening. And that is annually on Mother's Day weekend. This year we're only going to do it on a Saturday, so that's the 7th of May. For any of you who are around, it's really, really fun. And there's really good ice cream. Bigger than it started out being. It got really carried away with concrete and stone and it was quite an adventure, and I wasn't exactly keeping my eye on it, so <laughs> it's kind of this behemoth oven, but we use it. We don't fire it up on a regular basis. It's a wood-burning oven. It does take a lot of wood. Uh, the garden staff has to come two or three hours before the classes to start the oven, um, but we do it judiciously. We'll fire it up for two or three weeks in consecutive during the year. We'll fire it up for back to school nights and parent visits but we don't we don't just arbitrarily it takes a lot of planning and we don't just arbitrarily fire it up hmm. yeah the weeds are always 
kind of out of control. We try not to let things flower. We'll do some mowing if it's things that we can't get to. We have a group of um, adult volunteers. Um, there are adults who don't really want to work with the children, so we have this thing called Wednesday Weeders, and on Wednesday afternoons for an hour and a half, they just basically come and pull weeds. It's a constant battle. This so we're a year-round staff because um, the garden can't be just left to its own devices in the summer or we'd, we'd be in a lot of trouble. We host a two-week summer program for our kids. Um, we usually do that at the beginning of the summer. This year we have something else going on that I'll tell you a little bit about. So it's actually going to be at the end of the summer. Like I say, we're always experimenting. We also have our academy our, um, that, that, that Winslow mentioned. And so um, there, the, our staff gets, our teaching staff gets a five-week summer vacation, so there's uh, rotating going on, and um, we also, our gardeners have kind of got it down to a science. We plant the garden so that a lot of things are, um, we're harvesting late so that when the kids come back to school at the end of August, it's tomato time in Berkeley, it's corn time, it's bean time, so we really, last summer it was amazing because those of us who work all through the year we're here trying to forage around for lunch and we couldn't even find a squash you know it was sort of like this is ridiculous you know so people because people always say to us what happens in the summer that's your biggest harvest season well Berkeley you know we're really fortunate we can harvest late so we don't have a lot of waste and we don't have this big abundance in the summer that that we we don't use fortunately